And socially, what was high school like for you? I know you had like a couple of experiences that weren't so positive. So like, I feel boarding schools more than any other um, any other thing in in school are like all about hierarchy. Like, you know, in, in schools, like where you go for the day, like a hierarchy exists, but yeah. you know, with like the cool kids and the less cool kids. But I feel like boarding school more than anything, because you're literally living with people, eating with people, doing everything every single day, an absolute hierarchy happens there mm -hmm. way way more than you normally get in in and any other where did you feel like you were on the hierarchy oh i was like low but like <laughs> but, but the interesting thing with me is right so so probably the the guy who um who liked to you know swing around the most and you know try and like be the head of the hierarchy was uh was a kid called sean um you know comes from like billionaire parents so doesn't have to worry about school and you know can just go and get jacked at the gym all day um mm -hmm. but uh here's the thing like a lot of the time the hierarchy wouldn't really you know matter that much it would just kind of be like you know person higher in the hierarchy tells you to go do something or tells you to go away and like you do it but yeah. my but you, like i mean you know me and probably most people who know me in real life know me i am stubborn i am the most yeah. stubborn son of a bitch you will ever meet i like just on principle like i like does, you could i i could say the sky is green or the sky is is purple and you'd be like it's blue and i would refuse to admit that i'm wrong um and it, it, not not in the same way but in a similar way that kind of transitioned into that hierarchy stuff where um sean hated me i think most of all people because i was didn't like back down. I, yeah i didn't back down so i think you know like i'm gonna have to do the condensed version of this story um well because like boarding school would all sit around a table for breakfast uh generally the rule is if someone like finishes uh the like milk jug at the table you got to go refill it sean emptied it and then he like uh turned to me and he was like he was like elliot go fill it up and i was like i was like i just sat down i'm not you just finished it like you do it i'm i don't i'm not even drinking that and he was like go do it and i was like no so then he got this jug of orange juice and upended it on my tray and i was just like fuck you sean and he was like you're gonna pay for that later anyway that night in the uh in the boarding right. house he uh he tackled me onto the ground in the dorm and was like apologize for that and i was like i was like fuck you sean he was like apologize and i was like you're a dickhead he was like apologize i was like you're a dickhead he was like say that one more time i dare you i was like you're a dickhead and then he kneed me in the face and uh i think he fractured my nose but long story short there was so much blood i remember i had to throw my shirt out because it was literally just red all the way through but um wow. yeah but there's very much a you know snitches get stitches policy so like never really like became like a, a deal mm -hmm. with teachers um which in hindsight actually i would say you know it's easy like it's what you know fucking adults older people are always gonna say in hindsight nah you should definitely if you're getting physically attacked probably actually bring that to the attention of someone uh because you know as much as there's a bro code there's also if the person breaks the bro code in the first place by just being an absolute twat then uh they probably don't yeah. deserve to get covered by it um how do you feel like that like how did that make you feel in the moment like were you angry were you frustrated no i, like, I how loved did that it impact? i love like like in the sense that i like it sounds weird i loved that he snapped and did that because i won you know like sure yeah. he's bigger than me he's always going to win physically i'm not going to be able to beat the guy up but like mentally he snapped because he's so used to having his billionaire dad buy him whatever he wants and get whatever he wants in life and all that kind of shit. And like telling kids lower in the hierarchy to go do this, go do that. And then yeah. finally not being Good able to you. get that. That was like a big thing for me. Anyway, I hope he's doing well these days. Probably not as much of an ass anymore because I think I'm not as much of a twat as I was in boarding school. I think people change a lot from when they're in boarding have school. You ever, have you ever spoken to any of those people since school? Oh yeah, I've talking to oh like not necessarily people. Oh actually there are one or two people who I wasn't like on good terms with and who were probably, you know, slightly we were kind of against each other in boarding school. But that's what I mean. Like those people when I talk to them these days, I'm like, you know, it's like great. It's like I'll go over beer with them, we'll have yeah. a chat. It's like fantastic. Because That's really um, nice.
that you can view it that way because I think a lot of people would hold that bitterness and like that was one of the questions I was going to ask you like did it fuel you like do you think it made you driven to be like no I'm going to show that person wrong and no I don't think any of my drive comes from comes from like wanting to prove people wrong I don't I don't think at all really I think um you know I'm I'm driven but I don't think that's where it comes from um where do you think it comes from the weird thing is I wasn't always like I yeah I I, like it's interesting talking thinking about school I remember in uh you know basically year seven eight nine ten my grades sucked I was horrible and then I remember at the end of year 10 I I think I fully fluked it because I did, I wasn't studying. I was so taken out of left field. I got the single highest mark in the year group for a chemistry test, the end of year chemistry test. And I remember mm-hmm. like teachers like looking at me being like, because they heard that I got the highest mark and being like, oh, good job. And the head of my boarding school being like, good job, Elliot. And all that. And I was like, I was like, oh, wow. This like doing well thing is, is kind of cool. Hey, like, you know, this is like good. And anyway. Um, it feels good. Yeah, it feels really good. Anyway, then, uh, and I, I think you're very much a product of the people you're around. And I got very lucky because of that um, result. My the head of my boarding school, I think we got put in. We got put in studies of two, so two people to a study. And uh, shout outs to Robbo because I think he like saw that I wasn't always necessarily doomed to get bad grades, and I had a small amount of potential mm-hmm. after that. So he put me in a study with. Uh, a kid called Dan Lee, who is single smartest, hardworking person I've ever met in my life. And just being in that study with him, it just created this culture of like, work is cool. You know, yeah. like, I think, I think you're very much like you're either in a, and I was talking to some, I remember talking to teachers about this, where it was like why the year 12 results would go up and down each year. The final year results would go up and down mm-hmm. each year. And it was like year groups as a whole, either decide study is cool or study is not cool. And whichever way yeah. a certain year group goes will swing the overall performance of that year group so much. And I think that happened for me with, yeah, studying with, with Dan, because he was, uh, he was just so hardworking, um, like, you know, would, would, I, I would like love just going through English with him and reading and studying with him and like being like, oh, we're not going to go to bed because we're going to stay in the study and like work a little bit later. And it just yeah. made me, I, I just, I don't know. I, I suddenly swapped. Gives you like a hunger. Yeah. I suddenly swapped from not caring to literally having, I think, an addiction to like grades. I was going to say, because I think something something that I notice is a really, really strong fundamental trait of who you are is that you're very competitive, you're extremely driven, and I see that in every aspect. Like with games, I think you're driven. With life generally, I think you're driven. And I think that's such a good lesson in that you're an average of the people that you surround yourself with. And if you put yourself in an environment where you're surrounded by people that are better than you, that work really hard, that just culture of excellence rubs off on you. And do you feel like you almost saw year 12 as like a game to be played? Like a game where it was like, I want to succeed at this. I want to do good. Yeah. I mean, once again, I think I had just such a good group in year 12 of being like, and I remember, yeah, just everyone, I, I don't know. I just remember having this really good group around me of like 10 to 12 people where everyone was just like the cool thing to do was to be getting good grades you know if you were the guy who like knew how to do poetry analysis better than anyone that was like people would like come and chat (laughs) with you and be like oh dude like so what do you think about that like this thing's really cool i remember i just became obsessed and i was lucky enough to have some really really good teachers and just really really good people surrounding me and i yeah i think i was very much like a product of just my environment Mm -hmm. in that in that year but um, yeah, I'm. it's so weird thinking back, you know, like how, you know, a, a couple of years earlier, like no one wanted to study. It sucked. And then I remember in year 12, people literally boasting about, they're like, oh, bro, like I've got myself down to four hours of sleep at night now so I can maximize studying until 3 a.m. and then wake up at seven. Like, 
only four hours. I only need four hours sleep a night and I can operate almost functionally. And everyone's like, oh my God, how'd you do that, dude? And it was like, well, I just kept cutting 20 Bang minutes energy. a night off. <laughs> literally, that would be like, I literally just cut, I, I kept cutting 20 minutes a night off. And then also I have this giant box of caffeine pills and I just pop them until I can't stay, stay awake anymore. And it's like, man, that's like aggressive. Don't do that, by the way. It's a bad idea. Don't, <laughs> don't do any of that. But um, yeah. I, yeah, I was very much a product of the of the people I was in.